Thank you guys so much. And in case any of you didn't notice it, they didn't have a whole lot of notice that they were going to be singing at our indoor outdoor service here. So we appreciate that you guys got that together. How many of you guys are excited for Sunday school to start again? <laughs> we'll take notes on that. But <laughs> yeah. Sunday school starts again next week, and today we are celebrating the fact that we're starting a whole nother year of Christian education here at Trinity, and it is a wonderful joy. And did you guys know that you guys aren't the only ones involved in it? Christian education is not just about little kids. Sometimes we think, you know, oh, Christian education in the church is when you're little, and once you get done with Sunday school and catechism class, well, then you're just done with it. That's not true. As Christians, we have the joy of learning about God all throughout our entire lives. Everybody here, no matter how old they might be, they're still learning about God, even the pastor still learning about God, still finding the riches in God's holy word because it's so deep that it never ends. It's a joy for us as a congregation to teach you guys about Jesus, and it's a joy for us as a congregation to learn ourselves. Now, as we do this, you guys probably know already what the most important part of Sunday school is, right? Is it the stickers? Is it the coloring? Is it the songs, as awesome as they are? What is the most important part about Sunday school? Learning about God. And just learning about the rules that we have to follow, right? And how God says, this is what you must do, and you must do it. No, what's the most important thing that we can learn about? What do you see up there? The cross. What happened on the cross? Why is that so important for us? Jesus died to take away our sins. He came to us in the flesh. He took all of our sins upon himself. He suffered and died in our place, and he rose again to give us the guarantee of everlasting life in heaven. That's good news, isn't it? That's something worth learning about, and that's something worth telling other people about too. And no matter how familiar you might be with that, no matter how quickly you can answer that question, there's always more to learn. There's always more to see how Jesus is present and active in each of our lives and all the joy that we have because of his cross and his empty tomb. So thank you guys so much for singing and for sharing the word with us. I look forward to another year of Sunday school and catechism class and Bible study and all the great things that we're going to be able to do as we gather together in God's word. So thank you guys. You can head back to your seats. And it truly is a joy for us to gather together, even though we are indoors and the weather didn't quite cooperate with our original plans. But what a joy to come into God's presence and to hear the word of forgiveness, life, and salvation that he so freely pours into our undeserving lives. This morning we will be following the order of service as printed in the bulletin. We rise to make our beginning. And as we gather in the presence of the one true and triune God, we look to our baptism, where God himself called us by name, washed us clean of all of our guilt, and declared us to be heirs of his eternal kingdom of heaven. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help. And you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who went down to the dead. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us, that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, comes from the prophet Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord God, Behold I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness, and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture 
They shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and a drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. And this is the word of the Lord. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of all. The epistle reading comes from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, the first chapter. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy, because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And this is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel that serves as the text for our sermon this morning comes to us according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country, and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you. Let us confess our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today here at Trinity, we celebrate Rally Sunday. And it's a tradition that Lutheran churches have had for a long time. 
It's a festival to kick off another year of Christian education, an opening day of Sunday school, a time to rejoice in the fact that we are able to bring the word of God in Christian education to the youth, to the elderly, to the people of all ages of this congregation and this community. As we do so, we are thankful for the teachers, for the helpers, for the administrators who put in the time and the effort to teach everybody. We're thankful for the students, both the new ones and those who are returning and have been here for years. We're thankful for their families, for trusting them to our care, for taking the time to get them up a little bit earlier in the morning, get them dressed and in the car and over here to come to Sunday school. But most of all, we are thankful for God's holy word that we have the privilege of teaching. We're thankful that God has given us Holy Scripture, preserved it from generation to generation, and given us the joy and the opportunity to share that word with the young of our area. Now, faithful Lutheran education is unlike what you might find in other churches. Yes, here we have coloring, and we have stickers, and we sing songs, and yes, occasionally there will be snacks. And for a lot of churches, that's kind of the focus of Sunday school. It's more a daycare, time to bring the children together, give the parents a little bit of a relief, give them some cute things to think about, but that's about as deep as it goes. But not us. We are Lutheran. We understand the importance of God's holy word. We understand that God's word does not just start applying to your life once you reach a certain age, and that's when you need to really start thinking about it. We understand that God's word is essential at all stages of life, and so we make God's holy word, that infallible, unchanging word, the very center of everything that we do, even from an early age on. And so in our Sunday school, in our Bible studies, in our catechism classes, we tell these children what that word of God proclaims. And what it proclaims in no uncertain terms whatsoever is that they are sinners. That they have transgressed God's holy word. That God has laid out a holy and perfect law and they have not kept it and they cannot keep it. We don't shy away from the fact that even at a young age, people despise God. People hear his word and turn away from it. We don't turn away from the fact that even small children are by nature sinful and unclean, driven naturally to sin, to go against God's Ten Commandments, to hear the word of God and say, I think I can do better. We tell even the young children of our community, that they are wretches who deserve eternal hell. We tell them that the wages of sin is death, eternal death, separation from God. We tell them that the world is wrong in its proclamation that whatever you believe, as long as you believe something, you'll get to heaven one way or another. We proclaim that harsh truth, that Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And we do these things, not because we hate these children and want to scare them, but we do it because we speak the truth. God's word does not change to suit our comfort level, to suit our culture, to suit what we want it to say. God does not have a moving goalpost. He doesn't change, he doesn't grade on a curve and say, well, at this point in history, they said this was okay, so I'll go along with it. God's word is eternal, and we all have broken it. We have all turned away. We, like sheep, have gone astray, despising the good shepherd, ignoring what he has to say for us. As he leads us to good pasture, we turn and run and go eat the rocks and the thistles and the dirt and say, this is so much better than what he was trying to force us to eat. We proclaim the law of God at all stages in our Christian education. We proclaim that we are deserving of God's eternal wrath and condemnation. 
but we don't stop there. If we did, I would honestly question the sanity of any parent who brings their children to us because we proclaim that harsh reality of God's law. We refuse to water down the truth of God's holy word. We tell children and everyone who come here that we are all sinners. But then, then we speak the glorious truth that Jesus receives sinners like us. In our gospel reading today, the Pharisees and the scribes, the holy people of Jesus' time, they were scandalized by what Jesus was doing. They thought they were the ones who were deserving of Jesus' attention. They thought if Jesus truly was a holy man, he would be catering to them, doing what they wanted him to do, greeting with them, patting them on the back and telling them, that's a great job you're doing there. But instead, what do we see Jesus doing? He's eating with sinners, tax collectors, people that the Pharisees and the scribes looked down upon and hated. These were people who weren't worthy of Jesus' attention in their mind. These were people who were awful, who God obviously despised because look how bad their lives are. Look how awful they are. God couldn't possibly love someone like them. And so when Jesus, the Messiah, God himself in the flesh, receives sinners, eats with them, speaks with them, tells them that they too receive the kingdom of heaven through grace and repentance, they're scandalized. They think that is just awful. Because it's not just a matter of bad decorum, it's a matter of grace. It's a matter of faith. They thought these people didn't deserve heaven because they had worked so hard, they deserved it. And the fact is, they're right. We don't deserve heaven, but neither did they. Not one of us, not one person, no matter how good they might look on the outside, deserves heaven because God is holy. God is perfect. God is righteous and without sin. And so sinners like us, we deserve only his wrath and his condemnation for all eternity. And so yes, it is a scandalous thought that Jesus would receive sinners. That he would deign to come to us to lower himself to our station and to speak his word to us. But that's what the gospel is all about. We proclaim that harsh reality of God's law, that we are sinners who deserve to be cast out of God's presence forever, who deserve eternal death. But then we proclaim that glorious gospel to the children of our community, to the youth, to the adults, to the elderly, to everyone who will listen. We tell them that even though we are miserable sinners, we are loved by the creator of the universe. We are loved and we are forgiven. We who run away like stubborn little sheep, we are lovingly pursued by the good shepherd. He takes great pains to bring us out of the peril that we put ourselves in. Not just the time and energy that a shepherd takes in hunting down a sheep, but he gave everything. We tell them, how the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep that he cares for so much. We tell them that God who created all things, God who is perfect, God who laid out that perfect law that we do not keep, humbled himself to take on our human flesh, to come to us as one of us, to place himself beneath his own holy law, even though he had no obligation to do so whatsoever. He came to us, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, to fulfill it in our place, to do perfectly what we could not, to live that perfect life that was necessary to fulfill God's requirements. And then, in an act of love that we will never understand, God, the spotless lamb, took upon himself every one of our sins, all of our blemishes, all of our wickedness, all of our wretchedness was taken from us 
and laid upon him. And he willingly took that load of filth and sin and guilt to the cross where he laid down his life in pain and shame and agony, suffering the death that should have been ours for all eternity. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, laid down his life for us sinful sheep so that we could be redeemed, spared from sin, death, and the devil. His perfect righteous blood paid the price that we never could to take away our guilt, to wash us and make us as white as wool. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, gave up everything so that we could be saved. He suffered and died for us upon the cross. And on the third day, he rose again from the grave to shatter the chains of death for all eternity. All those who look to him in faith, all who hear the word of God and keep it, all who look to him as their redeemer and savior will rise again to eternal life. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. And that too, just like God's holy law, never changes. And so we put that at the center of our Christian education. We put that at the center of our divine services each and every Sunday. We put that at the center of our very lives, knowing and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sinners like us. We share that good news with the youth, with everyone in the community. And when one sinner repents, when one wayward sheep finally stops struggling and running away, we rejoice and all of heaven rejoices with us because God loves the world. The world does not care about you. The world despises you. The world doesn't even know who you are, but your father in heaven does. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he loves you more than you could possibly know. He has given everything so that you, a sinner, a rebellious little sheep, could be with him forever in his heavenly kingdom. And there in that perfect paradise that he has prepared for us, we will rejoice for all eternity. There will be no more pain and suffering no more sin or temptation, no more sorrow, no more death. Only the eternal joy of singing out God's praises for all eternity. And so in many ways, church, Sunday school, it's just a prelude to the eternal kingdom that awaits us. As we gather here in God's holy presence, as we hear his word, as we sing out his praises, this is a foretaste of the feast to come as we will see with our own eyes our Heavenly Father. We will hear His words with our own ears. We will sing out in perfect harmony His praises with our own voices. That's the message that we proclaim through our Christian education. That's the message that we as Christians cling to in a world that despises us, in a world of change and hurt and pain and darkness. That's the message that we joyfully share with all people so that they too could know the truth. That's the message that we are kicking off today and what we proclaim every single day as a faithful congregation hearing the word of God. We don't water down God's law, but neither do we change his gospel. We tell children and youth and adults and everyone that they are indeed sinners and they need to repent. But we tell them also that Jesus, the Messiah, God himself in the flesh, receives sinners like us. Not just to dine with us, not just to make us feel a little bit better. He receives us undeserving sinners into his eternal and perfect kingdom. He receives us with open arms to that glorious paradise of heaven. He receives us and he rejoices over us because he has restored us as his beloved children. The truth, the harsh truth, is that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's a truth that we refuse to shy away from because it is a truth that we all desperately need to hear. 
even more important than the truth of God's law, we believe, teach, and confess the glorious truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that by his cross alone, by his empty tomb alone, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen. And now that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to seek after us lost sheep and to bring us home rejoicing. Let us call upon him now in thanksgiving and petition for ourselves and for all people. O Father in heaven, we pray to you through the Son in the Holy Spirit. Grant that we may daily recognize that you provide for our every need of body and soul. We praise and bless your holy name for all your gracious gifts from above. Lord, in your mercy. In your Almighty God, you call pastors and set them to the task of shepherding your people. Bless them in their work of providing your gifts to those you have gathered, and as they seek those who have wandered away. Let your word change lives, bringing those who despise you into your flock, and turning back the hearts of those who have wandered from your truth. Lord, in your mercy. In your Gracious Lord, look with favor on the households of this congregation and grant that all may live in love that issues from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Bless Randy and Jean as they celebrate their anniversary and let all husbands and wives love, honor, and cherish one another. We give you thanks for the safe birth of Charlie Marie to Jonathan and Shannon and we pray that you would bless and keep her throughout all her days. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Father, in the waters of baptism, you united us with your Son in his death to sin and his resurrection to new life. Bless those celebrating their baptisms this week, including Haley, Jolene, Ryan, Mark, and Sammy. Keep each of us always in mind of our baptismal grace, that we may live lives worthy of your name, which you placed upon us at the font. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our King, you appoint princes and all governing authorities. Remember those you have placed in authority over us and grant that they might fulfill their responsibilities according to your word and for the good of your people. Bring peace and prosperity to our land and let all of us act as good citizens, serving our neighbor and resolving differences with civility and respect. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of life, you heal and deliver us from all afflictions according to your perfect fatherly will. Hear our cries for all who are in need of strength and rescue, especially Randy, all our shut-ins, and all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Most merciful God, remember your baptized children who have wandered from the household of faith. Pursue them as a shepherd who seeks lost sheep, Strengthen their families to persist in prayer and confidence in your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we begin another year of Christian education, we ask that your Holy Spirit be upon us. Bless the teachers, helpers, students, and all who participate in any way. Let your word be taught with boldness and in truth, and let each of us grow ever stronger in a right Christian faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, all things are yours, and you have promised to well supply us with all that we need. Give us courage and faith that we may give a confident amen to these prayers, certain that you will give us all that is good and beneficial to our salvation and preserve us from all things harmful. All this and whatever else you would have us ask of you, we ask for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Again, and welcome to all of you, and what a joy it is to gather together in God's holy presence, to hear that law which certainly does convict us of our sin, but to hear the gospel which proclaims that we have been set free from the law, that by grace, through faith, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, we are given the guarantee of forgiveness and everlasting life in heaven. I draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin as our Christian education year kicks off. It becomes a busier time here at Trinity, but what a glorious kind of busy it is as we share that good news with so many people. This Thursday evening, for real this time, we will have our Bible study at uh, 7 p.m. Our What Lutherans Believe study continues as this week and next week we will be looking at the Apostles' Creed and doctrine in general. So we invite everybody to join us for that. Next Sunday, we have our first week of Sunday School. And so Sunday School will begin at 8.45, Divine Service at 10 o'clock, and then we will also have our Bible study uh, following at 11 o'clock. Um, Sunday School is for youth and adults. Adult Sunday School will meet up in the Fellowship Hall as we are going through a book looking at the symbols of the Christian church. So everybody is welcome to join us for that. Um, today, following our service, we were going to be grilling out down at the park, but instead we are grilling out here. Safely, it's outside, don't worry. Um, <laughs> Um, and so we would invite everybody to join us for a time of fellowship and food. Everything is provided by the Board of Education. So if you think, oh no, I didn't bring pasta salad, don't worry about it. Everything's provided. Come join us and celebrate with us as we kick off another year of Christian education. 
With the kickoff of Christian education, uh, we have for our students who are entering into the lower and upper class of our catechism, we have the presentation of books for them. So entering into the fifth grade and beginning catechism class for the first time is Ashley Hess. Don't think she is here today. And Paul Redditch. I know this guy. Come on up. All the way. <laughs> so welcome to catechism class. <laughs> yes, you can go back. <laughs> we did not rehearse this. <laughs> and then entering into our seventh grade upper class, we have Emily Pruss. Welcome. And our seventh graders each receive a copy of the Lutheran Service Book, which is the main textbook that we use uh, for that curriculum. We have Addison Clapham. I don't believe I saw her. And Isaac Schott, who is on vacation. So do keep all of our students in your prayers. Uh, it is a difficult time in this world to be that age. And they are assaulted by so many false messages and so many things that try to pry them away from their Christian faith. And so we appreciate the families who, again, entrust them to our care as we are able to teach them the glorious truth of God's holy word. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you in the rest of your week. And may he bring you back safely to his holy house in the days and weeks to come.